right, what's going on, everybody? Back with you. Uh, you might notice, though, there's no Jim. <laughs> so um, Jim will be here sooner rather than later. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Please let us know where you're watching from tonight. We're going to recap you know, a tough couple of days, uh, to be honest, in the Bay. Um, still, I think a successful road trip, if we're being honest, you know, taking four out of seven. Jim's going to be here. His internet is trash, you know. Um, so let us know where you're watching from. Jim will be here hopefully within moments. Otherwise, we'll get going. Uh, but let us know where you're, uh, where you're watching from here tonight. Uh, again, it's a wrap-up show with John, not with Jim, presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. A reminder as you make your way into the chat tonight, uh, please subscribe. If you're a Padres fan, I think a lot of people here are live or already subscribed. But if you're watching on replay and you're looking for exclusive year-round Padres content, we have it for you. So Please hit that um, subscribe button. Please hit the notification bell. Please um, smash the like button um, if you are here. And also please follow us on social media at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. Um, and let's get to it tonight. Because again, you know, I think on the whole, most people are going to agree it was a good trip. I think the last couple of days weren't that great, to be honest. I think it was a good trip. Um, also, as you make your way in, if you want to make sure we get your comment, again, without Jim, um, please use the super chat function so I can keep up to date with these comments. But if you want to make sure I see your comment, please use that super chat function. Um, and I'll make sure to get to it. Uh, one second here. I'm working on my light. What's going on with this light? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, showbiz folks behind the scenes showbiz. Um, so thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. All right, let's get to some of these shout outs. Let us know where you're watching from here tonight. We'll recap today. We'll look ahead to tomorrow. Let us know if you're going tomorrow, by the way. Um, I'll be in Park City. That's a whole other story. We'll get into that as we uh, as we roll along. Uh, let's get to some of these shout-outs here. Um, <laughs> what's going on? What's going on, bud? I think we do know what you're doing. Thanks for your support of the channel. Um, <laughs> wait, what's this? Uh, you think I know what I'm doing? Okay. Um, Michael, thanks for hanging out with us from Temecula. <laughs> thanks for the visual here. Uh, Alex, thanks for hanging out with us. John, thank you. Oceanside Boy 760. Dude, Anthony, I know you heard my story. I think you did the other day. I broke down in LA. What an absolute disaster. I mean, just an absolute disaster on Saturday. Um, no surprise, Oceanside Boy is in Oceanside. Uh, SoCal Boys is in Idaho. Uh, let us know where you're watching from tonight, folks. Frank is uh, in Idaho. Thanks for hanging out, Frank. Uh, thank you, Miles, by the way. Thank you. As you guys make your way in. Yeah, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. And I mean, the support of Padres fans has been awesome. I mean, it's, it's really been awesome. Um, you know, this isn't possible without you guys and without our sponsors. And your support of our sponsors, your support of Mark Nimitz, your support of Aura. Um, we've got really good reaction to our relationship right now with Monkey Knife Fight. We'll tell you more about that coming up here today. Uh, some of the merch. There's a link down below for the merch. Wrap-up show merch has been doing well the first few days we've had it. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Seriously, for your support of this channel. It means a ton to uh, to me and Jim. I promise you that. Um, I miss surfing South Jetty in the harbor. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Is this Jim in the chat? <laughs> I think that might be Jim in the chat. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yes, John. Uh, now, that was not me. There was a, a former first-round pick out of Stanford, I want to say, with my identical name, maybe late 90s, early 2000s, John Schaefer. That is not me. Maybe a catcher in the Twins organization, I want to say. Um, but yeah, that was not me, as you can tell. I mean, look at me. Um, all right. We like that. We like that. Uh, B. Danger, thank you. What's going on? Hello to you as well. Matt, welcome from uh, down in Louisiana. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, okay, so Mark Nimitz. We'll get to our partnership with Mark in a second, our title sponsor. Where's Jim? Here he is. <laughs> he's, I don't even know. What he, he's probably on his phone. Who the hell knows? Jim, if you're on your phone, just pick up your phone and use like the 3G and just, I don't even know how to do that. Um, <laughs> look at Jim. Look at Jim. Uh, Kevin, thanks for ha hanging out with us. Uh, what, 1 a.m. out in Virginia? Um, <laughs> am I Hugo? Thanks for hanging out. Um, okay, please, you know what, Jim, while you're, while you're posting like random comments, can you post a link to the merch shop, Jim? You should know how to do that. Your Jim knows how to do that, right? Uh, here's Jim. He's in South Park with no internet. Jim, I know you have no internet. Post a uh, link to our merch store. By the way, the link for the merch store, if you're watching, by the way, 
is just it, click the show more button down below and then there's a link for it right there so click the show more button you'll see mark nimitz you'll see aura you'll see our merch you'll see monkey knife fight our promotion um so just click that uh click that link down below show more uh mark is in poway um <laughs> I, yeah, ex- I, exactly. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Absolutely. Alex watching from uh, Otay Ranch. Carlos, a lot to you as well. The danger, OC. Uh, John, it is for us as well. This is therapy for us as well, so thank you. Hugo in the Bay Area. Not a great week for the Padres in the Bay Area, but thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Weiss is in the uh, East Village tonight. I'll get to a few more here, and then we'll get to the Super Chats. Again, if you want to make sure we get your comment, because this is going to be kind of fast and furious with Jim like on the IL or whatever he's on, um, make sure to do the Super Chat if you want to make uh, your comment into the chat here tonight. We appreciate your support of the channel by using that Super Chat function. Uh, by Bitcoin Dailies in Tempe. We got our buddy in Lemon Grove, and we got Ezra in Orlando. Um, okay, let's start with uh, the first Super Chat of the night, and then I'm going to tell you about our title sponsorship with Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance, who is in the chat. Click on his link down below, whether you're watching live or on replay. If you, if you have any insurance needs, Mark's going to help you out if you're in San Diego. Uh, Matt, thank you for your support of this channel. We really appreciate it. Um, and he writes, we obviously love Jim, but you are top notch by yourself. Jim, I mean, you might get Wally pipped here by Matt, to be honest with you. <laughs> you might just get Wally pipped by me. Um, or just by our audience. If someone wants to join in, since Jim can't, um, you know, maybe it's the wrap-up show with John and Matt. We're kidding. We're kidding, Jim. Kind of, right? We're kidding. Matt, thank you. Uh, thank you for your support of this channel. I think we have a super sticker just run in. Uh, we did from John Murray. Now, let me switch over to uh, to YouTube to see. Oh, that is a smiley face with um, sunglasses emoji. So, John uh, thank you for the super sticker. Again, anyone that is supporting the channel with the merch or with the sponsorships or with the super chats, um, it really means a lot to us. Um, okay, before we get started, I want to tell you about Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance because my wife and I have switched over insurance to Mark within the last, how long was it, Mark? Within the last month, right? He made it super easy. He's saving us money. Um, we have earthquake and homeowners through Mark. You can get auto home renters life. He can save you $750 this year, which is just a lot of money. I mean, he can just save you and your family a lot of money. So if you're a San Diego and you have insurance needs, we have a link for Mark Nimitz down below. He's our title sponsor. Um, and if you are looking for a way to support this channel, that's a good way to do it, but click on the link down below, see how Mark can help you and your family. Um, and again, you can save money, but it's any needs. If it's auto, it's great. If it's homeowners, it's great. If it's earthquake, it's great. We'll talk Padres baseball with you. And again, like I always say, um, he's got great service. Uh, you know, he took care of all of our insurance stuff in like a day. I had to do nothing. He, he did all the behind the scenes work. He made it super easy, which is what everyone wants. Um, so again, if you want to support this channel, please support our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. Um, in terms of where we should uh, jump off from here today, and again, whether you're watching live or on replay, Padres fall. In the series finale this afternoon um, in the Bay Area at Oracle 2-1, despite Sean Mania, uh, despite taking an early lead, despite the fact that the Giants offense really did nothing other than one hit in this game from their eight-hole hitter, um, whomever he was. I mean, I think, you know, just like the flavor of the day for the Giants, like they do all too often. And then, um, you know, nothing, nothing for the offense. I mean, Logan Webb was essentially unhittable today for the Padres offense. And... Um, you know, there's a little bit of a trend here. I think if we're being honest, you know, this offense, the first week of the season has been, um, you know, the offense has been, it's been okay, I think at best. Uh, Mark, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Michael, for reaching out to Mark. That's awesome. Thank you guys for your support of Mark. I, I, know, I know that means a lot to Mark. It means a lot to Jim and it means a, a lot to me as well. So thank you for that. Um, but, you know, the offense hasn't been great the last couple of days. I think on the whole, you know, the offense has probably been, you know, below average. And I think the pitching has been above average. I think the starting pitching these first seven games has been really good. Um, six of them, at least not you Darvish yesterday. We can get into that a little more. We talked about it yesterday, but you Darvish wasn't good yesterday for being honest, but he was excellent on opening day. But, you know, you get pitching like this. I, I think the Padres honestly should be, you know, at worst five and two, you know, that they led game one, you know, the season opener in Arizona couldn't hold the lead. Okay, you didn't have Taylor Rogers. Okay, Robert Suarez was thrown into a spot that maybe he wasn't accustomed with making his major league debut. Okay. Um, 
But, you know, you get this pitching from Darvish on opening day. You get pitching like that, you should win. You get pitching like this from Manaya today, I think you should win. Um, and you need more from this offense. And I know it's only been seven games. And seven games is what percentage of a season? You know, four to five percent of the year. So it's hard to make broad generalizations of an offense or an individual player over the course of seven games and shoot. Most of these guys maybe haven't even played seven games. CJ Abrams hasn't played seven games. Um, so, you know, it, it's hard to make sweeping generalizations, but you know, Trent Christian's gotten off to a really slow start. You know, he really has. Um, you know, Luke Voigt's walked, which has been beneficial, but I thought, you know, I, we talked about today on John and Jim on, on the extra 1360. When you've got that run in in the first inning, you got to uh, scratch across the second run. Uh, Corona were tripled, and then they couldn't get him in with one out. Luke Voigt was at the plate. Voigt tonight, um, do I have this in front of me? I might be looking at yesterday's box score. Um, but Voigt today's hitless. You know, 0 for 4, grounds out with Cronenworth at third. He's thrown out at home plate. Um, so you got to find a way, in my opinion, to score that second run. I mean, that's the difference maybe between winning and losing in this game. Um, so, you know, you look up and down this lineup again. You know, Abrams 0 for 3, whatever. It's so early. I I'm still very high on Abrams. I think there's an, uh, you know, there's an acclimation process, obviously, to the big leagues. Um, so I'd still give him opportunities. I hope he has a chance to stick for most of the year, at least before Tatis gets back. So we'll see about that. Um, and then outside of that, you know, this offense didn't do anything here today. Myers has gotten off to a terribly slow start. I think really the story for me, <laughs> thank you by Bitcoin daily. I would expect that from a, a Bitcoin daily, uh, handle to have that percentage down. So 4% of the season, you know, um, I'd say this, you know, I think my biggest takeaway from the game is it's a 2-1 game. I, I liked the rally in the ninth inning. You know, um, I thought there were some good at-bats. I thought the Hosmer at-bat was really good in the ninth inning. Now he was 0-3 for 3 today. He was 0-3 for 3 yesterday. But in an important spot, I thought he had a very good at-bat to load the bases in this game um, or to help extend that rally there in the ninth inning. And then the most interesting part of today for me is what happened there in the ninth inning um, with the bases loaded. And how Bob Melvin elected to um, pinch hit for Will Myers. I mean, that to me, that to me is is a surprise, you know, and I liked it. I mean, it's a good surprise for me. He's putting himself in a position where he's saying, forget about all the other circumstances. I'm not in charge of payroll. I'm not in charge of feelings. I'm the leader of this ship, and we need this ship to win as often as possible. And that's all it's about. That's what matters, winning baseball games. And he thought that the platoon advantage with Matt Beatty, you know, a guy that had been a pretty good pinch hitter last year at the Dodgers, he thought the platoon advantage was more advantageous than Will Myers' just production as an offensive player. And I don't fault him for doing that. I mean, what, Myers has looked terrible at the plate this week. And again, it's only one week. Um, so, And the strategy backfired. Yeah, I mean, it didn't backfire. We don't know. Myers might have struck out as well. I mean, there's a decent shot there that Myers – doesn't come through and Beatty in that spot strikes out and but you can live with that um and I respect the fact that Bob Melvin would do that because I, I said with Jim today um I don't see Jace Tingler doing it I just don't see it happening over the course of an entire year I, I just don't see him doing it I mean maybe there were one or two instances you're like oh that's interesting you pinch hit in that spot for that player but this early in the year to do that I give Bob Melvin a lot of credit um and clearly, he has taken some level of command in a very short period of time. He's got a veteran team. I mean, these are veterans. Machado, uh, Voight, Hosmer, Profar, Myers, Alfaro. I mean, these are all veterans. I mean, his his pitching staff, Manaya, Darvish, Musgrove, right? I mean, there's not a lot of youth on this team right now. Um, so I like the fact that that's what transpired here today, if I'm being honest. And, you know, you wish they would have come through with that one additional hit. I mean, and they just didn't hit today. San Francisco didn't hit today either, but San Francisco scored two runs and the Padres scored one. So, um, you know, Jake Cronenworth triples, and that's your offense. Um, and I know Logan Webb is a good pitcher. I understand it, but you got to do better than this. I mean, you got to get him out of the game earlier um, or you got to score more often against him. And, you know, get, tip your cap to some extent to Logan Webb, but, you know, 96 pitches in eight innings, that's not good enough from this offense, you know. It's just not good enough from this offense, uh, in my opinion. So, again, if you're just making your way into the chat, we don't know where Jim is. John Schaefer with you. It's the wrap-up show presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you're watching live or on replay, uh, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, we have year-round exclusive Padres content. I think a lot of people in the chat right now would vouch for the content we have produced over the last six or seven months. Um, so we've got exclusive year-round Padres content. Uh, we do this for Padres fans. So please consider 
uh, hitting that subscribe button. If you hit the notification bell, you're notified notified when we go live. Uh, smash the like button. That helps us out. And also follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. Again, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. And our radio show is at John and Jim. That is J O N A N D J I M. Uh, again, if you are here tonight, there's a lot of these comments that are kind of flying by. If you want to make sure I get your comment, uh, you can always use that super chat function um, by clicking that down below the dollar sign. You can click that super chat function, whether you want to do a super chat or potentially a super sticker as well. Um, and thank you, Matt, again, for your support of this um, of this channel. This is a great question. And thank you for the super chat again. This is a great question. I love this. What do you guys think? This is for the chat. Um, who do you think gets the biggest ovation tomorrow? I'd say Musgrove, you know, depending on how he's introduced, right? Because you got the opening day all-star type introductions. I would guess he'd be warming or throwing, um, you know, either a Musgrove or a, a Machado would be my speculation. I mean, I, obviously it's Tatis, but there's no Tatis, you know, I mean, at least in the starting lineup, we, we know that he's out until at least early June. So yeah, for me, it's probably Musgrove. I think he's kind of earned it based on what he did last year. Like, this is an ovation for 2021. Like, who who really performed to the highest ability in 2021 on this roster? In my opinion, it's Joe Musgrove. And that's why he's pitching in the home opener. So I would say Musgrove. It's a little different sometimes for a starting pitcher. I think Machado, because of his you know, credibility and the way he's played in the Padres uniform and what he's meant to this organization, is going to get a good ovation. Um you know, I'm sure Coronaworth is going to get a good ovation um, for what he's done here over the last couple of years um, as well. But I think that's a really good question. Um, and I'd love to get the reaction of people in the chat tonight. Who's going to get um, the biggest ovation? Who's it going to be? Uh, so let's see what some people are saying here uh, in the chats. <laughs> Craig, I, I assume Craig's joking. Uh, Andrew, thank you. Danny, thank you as well. Um, Frank saying Musgrove or Cronenworth. And Matt responding to a super chat. We appreciate that. Saying Machado or Cronenworth. Yeah, I think these are all I think these are all accurate, right? These are the three names. Musgrove, Machado, Cronenworth. Um, you know, so I do think that those are oh, you know, here's an interesting one as well. Um, here's an interesting one. That's a good point. Bob Melvin. I mean, this is a big addition, right? I mean. Maybe as big of an addition as the Padres have made. I think you could argue, based on the way Sean Mania has pitched, that that is a really savvy move by A.J. Preller. Really savvy. Um, as Mania went, what, six innings here today, allowed two runs. Uh, he's got a 1-3-8 through two starts. He's 1-1. One one. He should be 2-0, and oh, obviously, based on the way he's pitched. Um, so, you know, that's an interesting point about Bob Melvin. I mean, we'll see how the season plays out. We'll see how the next couple of seasons play out. But Bob Melvin... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big upgrade. It's a big upgrade, if we're being honest, over uh, over Jace Taylor. Uh, what do we have here from Buy Bitcoin Daily? Thank you for the super chat. What Giants coach? Um, okay, okay. So th this is in reference. And we didn't really talk about this yesterday. If you want to, you know, if you want to comment on this, if you want to do a super chat on this, we can get into this for a few minutes. I mean, I'm not going to have some crazy hot take on this, um, guys. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's fair for me to have a crazy hot take on this. It's hard for me to really, you know, put myself in this position. I don't know Mike Schilt. Um, I do not know Antoine Richardson. Um, I have just no familiarity with them. Um, now, to by Bitcoin Daily's point about, and if you're not familiar, and I think the people in this chat probably are. I mean, you know, Schilt barks into the Giants' dugout essentially. Does he use language you shouldn't use? Uh, and I'm not I'm just saying vulgarities, right? That mf -er. Um, But this is professional sports. We know that that type of language is used. We know it's used in baseball. I worked 15 years in minor league baseball. I mean, cursing is a part of the on-field vernacular in baseball. It is. And jawing is. Whether you, whether you like it or not, or not, it just is. Um, so there's that with, with Schild. And then Richardson gets ejected. And then the fact that Richardson elevated what occurred on field to the media and then voiced his concerns in the way he did, where he said that it, you know, I'm paraphrasing now because I don't have in front of me and I'm doing a solo show because Jim is scratching two sticks together to make the internet. Um, I'm paraphrasing when he said something about it reeked of racism, you know, in my opinion, and again, I'm not Antoine Richardson. This is my opinion. In my opinion, I wish 
Richardson would have gone to Schilt first before he went to the media last night. I, I don't think that was fair to Mike Schilt. I don't think it was fair to the Padres organization. I don't think it was fair to label Mike Schilt in such a manner that he then had to defend himself publicly um, like he had to do today. I, ju I just don't think that was right. You know, and people may disagree with me. Um, and I was glad to see that it was kind of ironed out, so to speak, here today. Um, you know, I, I think Mike Schilt was probably a little bit of the – I don't even, I'm not even sure what to say. What, what upsets me a little bit is that when Richardson was ejected, that led to the debut of the first female coach on field in the history of Major League Baseball. Yet, I thought Richardson, in his actions and speaking to the media, and again, he might have been very upset. And that's, I can't say how he felt. I cannot say how he felt. So it's unfair for me to say, well, this is what I would have done. Well, I'm not Antoine Richardson, obviously, you know. But I felt as if by going to the media post game and explaining how he felt, it took away from really the story of the day, at least nationally, um, or could have been the story of the day, which was this female coach making her debut on field, um, which was still a big story. I saw on one of the national news tonight, it was the final story of the day, um, and they showed the handshake between her and Hosmer. But I, I just thought that in retrospect, I wonder if Richardson would have handled it the same way, you know? That's what I would say. In retrospect, would Richardson have handled that the same way or not? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. You know, I do not know the answer to that. Are we getting Jim Russell? I think Jim Russell might be making his way in. This is going to be very oh, – look at this. Look at this. Oh, baby. Are we on the wrong side? Let me remove myself. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's got to be on the left. I've got to be on the right. Would it's you like just to aesthetically explain pleasing? The 20, explain the last twenty minutes of what's been going on. I don't want to. <laughs> so, like, my landlord, he, he's been dealing with this. Credit, credit to him. Like, he's been working on this all night and finally got it done. Technology and things not great, and hopefully everything works out better because <laughs> he said he updated like everything so we'll see look at this <laughs> from gil the there she is bro uh um, come on look at this from craig our buddy craig i have risen <laughs> <laughs> on easter weekend <laughs> um you heard us talking I, you know let's start here and then we'll get to um <laughs> no question uh, I do want to get to Aura, Jim, and I, let me pull it up. Let's start there, and then I want to get your reaction to everything that transpired yesterday and today with Shilton and Richardson, because we just had a super chat on it. If you want to use the super chat while we go through this um, this relationship with with Aura, you can use that as well. Um, it, yeah, you kind of do, to be honest with you. I had, um, I mean, I had nothing else to do. I had no internet. I can watch TV, do nothing. All right, let's tell our uh, viewers tonight about our relationship. Look, I even have stuff in my cart right now at Aura, and I just placed an order through Aura. If you click this Take the Quiz uh, button or tab down below, you'll get 30% off your first order. Uh, this is a great company. Will, their co-founder, is a San Diegan. He supports this channel like Mark Nimitz, who's a San Diegan. We love working with San Diego-based companies on this uh, YouTube channel and the wrap-up show. 30% um, off if you click that take the quiz button and go through that process. Basically, they'll customize a product that is for you, whether it's proteins or probiotics or omega-3 oils. And I've been taking this probiotic. I just took one earlier today. I'm taking it every single day. I just did the reorder. I just bought this uh, sleep supplement as well. Um, I bought something else. And I looked at it last night. I'm like, what else did I buy? I bought something else. I bought three things um, just a day ago or two days ago. Um, so, you know, this is a plant-based uh, nutrition company, a completely plant-based nutrition company, all natural supplements, uh, great products. I take the probiotic um, for digestion and mental clarity, and there's a million reasons to take a probiotic. Jim takes these proteins after he works out. Uh, there are omega-3 oils, Jim, but it's just great products. Again, you can get 30% off. There's a link down below. It's a San Diego-based company. It's Aura.Organic, and there's a link down below. It's not just, you know, protein powders or pre-workouts is everything you need for a healthy lifestyle go there right now we're hooking you up 30 percent off your first order take the quiz you will thank us later um and thank you matt thank you matt for uh another super chat here tonight reunited man it feels so good you're like yeah get the hell out no 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 
No, this is good. I know it's hard to do the one man band because you're trying Oof. to do the stuff behind yeah. the scenes. Tomorrow, baby, three hours of the one man band. Join me at oh, three yeah. o'clock for so the we shit could show. Yeah, so I'm going to Park <laughs> City for the home opener because why wouldn't I? We've been talking about that. Um, so we we won't have as many wrap up shows over this first ser- home series of the year, but we will. We'll have some stuff. We'll probably do Sunday night after ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Definitely, I'll be back. We can recap, you know, that first home series um, of the year. But yeah, Jim's on the radio tomorrow, three to six, and we can all laugh at him trying to carry that for three hours. I'm going to call in, but other than that, good luck. <laughs> Try to carry for three hours. <laughs> Yeah, it's only three hours. Gonna, whatever. It, and by the way, it seems man, so easy. Three People are like, oh man, three hours? It's so easy. Yeah, until you start talking to yourself. <laughs> what the hell am I talking about? And all of a sudden you're well, like, wow, you think- only five minutes have, has passed. I know. But what you talked about today. I thought you said it better than I did. I thought your take was real. I don't even know what it was, but I thought I listened back to the first hour of the show and I remember <laughs> saying, oh, I, I really like what you were saying. But your Schilt Richardson, you know, what's your what's your 90 second take on it? Hold on, as I I spoke way too soon. Am I blurry? Can you see me? No, you look good. I do. Yeah, I. Uh, now you're a little blurry. Yeah, you're fine. You seriously, dude. You're. It's fine. Okay. Um. Well, I was just I had Sports Center on uh, a little mm-hmm. earlier tonight, and we talked about this. Like, what are they going to talk about in Sports Center? Right. And the first story that Scott Van Pelt brought up was Alyssa Nacken. Okay. And then he brought up Schilt and I, I can't remember the first base coach for the pod for the Giants. Oh, uh, Antoine Richardson. Antoine oh. Richardson. Yeah. 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 Um, Hold on one second here. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's Antoine Richardson. Um, yep. To me, what Antoine Richardson said after the game. Uh, I, you better be 100% in the fact that this dude that you are claiming to use racial slurs used a racial or use a racial, had a racial undertone to his thing. Right. Not, because, not a racial slur. Right. But a racial, mm-hmm. but having racial undertones. Yeah. And you could literally say anything has racial undertones. And then True. you're putting the person that you are accusing of in a in a position where now with the culture we live in, um, people are going to dub him a racist, like right off the bat. And so I thought, you know, what he was claiming was said, which was he, he's like that motherfucker was. I appreciate he, you not he, beeping that out. <laughs> no, I'm not beeping it out. Um <laughs> was like or had racial undertones to it i just didn't understand it um i thought it got taken a little too far um i wish that he talked to mike schilt beforehand before he brought the media out to let to tell them because it's like we are in such a clickbait society that when you say something like that okay it is going to be plastered all over which it was all over you know espn.com everything as you know, Mike Schilt used a racial, racial, racial slur towards the, the this this guy, and that's not the case. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, how many times do baseball players mf each other a all lot, the time? A lot, all the time. Yeah. So to go to that length and say that this guy, um, because he said that mf'er was a ra- had racial uh, uh, undertones to it, I thought it was too far. Um, now. I will say I'm not like saying that uh, Robert, Robertson shouldn't feel that way. But I mean, I just didn't like I didn't like how it, how it went. And I wish that I, yeah. instead of talking to the media, he talked to Schilt first instead of the next day. It's now squashed, by the way, like it's done. Yeah, um, yep. we, we shouldn't. This just should never be brought up again. And Mike Schilt should never be labeled a racist like this again um, because of the situation. Yeah, I, no, I think you said it really well. And we said it today on the radio, like what would make me really upset is if this came up like in job interviews for Mike Schilt when he's applying for managerial vacancies or coaching vacancies, or if he got a job and it was then mm-hmm. mentioned like in the, in the, not the release, but in the AP stories or in the local papers, like if that's part of the story, Oh, Mike Schilt was accused of the following from Antoine Richardson. I mean, that to me, 
like I said today, it's like it's a bridge too far to say what he said, which might have been choice words, and maybe it was inappropriate. Maybe he said it was. He said he shouldn't have used the words he used. Mike Schill, right. because he said mf -er. But to take that and misconstrue it for something that has racial undertones to me is way too much of a leap of faith or a bridge too far. And I think most of us agree with that. And if you disagree, feel free to comment in the chat, you know? Yeah, I think um, to go that route, and, and I'm not going to say play the race card because it wasn't a, he wasn't saying he said a racial a racial slur. He was more or less saying um, how you talk to people, right? Like how you talk to people, you should not do it. Which if he wants to come out and say that and say, I got ejected for this, Mike Schultz said this, and you shouldn't talk to people like that. That's that's fine. But to me, throwing the racial undertones line in there, like you're putting Mike Schultz in the spot where he's waking up in the morning like, what the hell? And his family. I happened. mean, imagine how they felt. I mean, imagine how Mike Schilt felt. We had Kevin Acey on today. He said he was devastated. Yeah. I mean, how would you feel? I again, especially if it's not accurate. You know what I mean? And if that, you don't, you don't know. It. Yeah, you don't know Mike Schilt. You don't know the yeah. person. Um, but does Antoine uh, Richardson know Mike Schilt? That's the other thing. In the moment, in when he went to the podium, so to speak, post game, did he really knew know who Mike Schilt was as a man? I mean, no, what well, did he, he know about Mike Schilt? If he didn't get thrown out, I don't think he says those things. And I think the fact mm. that he got thrown out in his mind, he was thinking, I got thrown out by a, a, a white umpire when this dude, uh, Mike Schilt, is cussing me out when I'm not doing anything. But the pool report today from the umpire said that he had no idea what was going on. He didn't realize Mike Schilt was yelling at, at the, the, the dugout. And when Robertson came out a second time, you can't do that as a, as a, a bench coach. And that's when right. he got thrown so he out got, of the game. He got thrown. He, yeah, he got, exactly. Uh, what do you make of it? We'll move on from this. And if you guys want to get involved with it, you can always use the Super Chat. Uh, JD's third. Uh, we talked a little bit about this last night. Actually, I freaked out on it. Uh, ban on written rules, bunting and swinging 3-0 is okay. That, that's where we're clearly heading in the game of baseball. Did Jim die? Ban on written rules, bunting and swinging three. I was okay. No, I'm here. Kind of. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're getting to, I'm saying we're getting near that, right? Where we're, we're, we're approaching banning unwritten rules. I mean, more and more every day, this is, this stuff is happening. All right. Forget about it. Jim, make your way back in, remove yourself and come back in. I feel like maybe if you come back in, you'll have a better internet. <laughs> Frozen Jim. Frozen Jim is the best. Look at you. Spinning circle gym is the best. <laughs> Unemployed gym is the best. Uh, Matt, thank you again for the super chat. Again, if you want to weigh in and get your comment on screen right now, you can use the uh, super chat function. Uh, today was bittersweet. Paddock lost, but against the Dodgers. That's a really good point. You know, on the radio, we got into that discussion, by the way, about, you know, Dave Roberts, you know, pulling Clayton Kershaw. I don't know if we want to do that on a Padre specific channel or not. Um, but that is funny to, to put it that way, Matt, that it was bittersweet because Paddock lost, but it was to the Dodgers of all teams. Jim, are you back? Yeah, I guess. Let me, let me cut, let me like talk to your landlord. I, dude, I don't even, I don't even know, bro. <laughs> are you drinking? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start drinking right now. Please. I'm going to do it. Screw it. Please. Uh, you know, what? while, we'll, um, so earlier when I said, hey, put a link in the chat to the merch store and you didn't, but you probably did. I don't know how you would have done that from where you were. Huh? Um, <laughs> I want to share for a moment with our viewers our brand new merch store. Yes. Um, and I'm wearing the sweatshirt. I don't know if you can see it right now because of what's. I think you can, right? Wrap up show sweatshirt. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the wrap up show merch. So we just put new stuff in over the last day or two. We got the uh, snapback, which... We need Jim, by the way. I feel like this is a very Jim Russell hat. Would it you is. agree with that, Jim? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to okay. get it. Uh, so we got the Jim Russell hat. Uh, we do have this sneaky, cool, um, like whatever this is. What is this? Sweatshirt. <laughs> it's a zip, yeah, zip up, up jacket. Zip up. Yeah. Um, and let me just throw like another one or two items up. Got this trucker cap. I'm a trucker cap guy, if you know me. Yeah, um, you are. Jim, did you know that? I'm a trucker cap guy. Yeah, I knew that, John. 
And then one more item to show. What should I show? How about, oh, Jim wanted the polo. Jim wanted the polo. Give me that polo, uh, baby. And there's the polo. So if you want to support you this channel. a black polo? Anything? No? Okay. Dude, the logo's dark. The logo's oh. dark. You know? That's true. The logo's a little dark That's for true. black. Uh, but if you want to support this channel, there is a link down below for our merchandise store. Um, and check it out. Wrap-up show, reach-around show, whatever other show. All Golden shower show. Uh, you know what? There might be a shower collection up there. <laughs> nah. There, there may be. There may be. Gold. Um, wait, what's this say? Awesome powers, baby. He knows what's up. Uh, well, there might be a cap up there, by the way. Just check, click click the link down below. See what's on the channel. Um, so, what else today? You want you have any? You have two cents on today? Logan Webb, Sean Mania, this offense. You can you want to rip this offense, Jim? Yeah, it sucks right now. It's mm -hmm. it's trash. I'm sorry. They had a great they had a great Sunday. They have no pop. Uh, they have no homers from in the middle of their lineup. Uh, you got to start hitting for power, man. It, the, the Grisham and Will right now, not good. Um, no depth. And it's, it's, it's actually, it's what I expected. Like going into the season, you can try to trick yourself and be like, oh, this offense is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, it, it really is not <laughs> when you look at it as a whole. Um, it is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is what it is. No pop. You have no other big bat in your lineup besides Machado, and yeah, maybe just a piquito. Um, <laughs> the thing with with Machado is too, it's like, is he going to hit thirty eight bombs? Because I don't think he's going to do that. He might hit thirty. Wait, wait, you say Machado? Yeah, that's a big number. That's a big I know. Number. Yeah, but imagine yeah, I mean, it I mean, is, I, I, and I know Tatis is not going to just show up and fix this lineup from from the second he gets back i understand that but the threats the, the threat of tatis in your lineup makes it that much better and it it and to have no left fielder i know jerks and profile are good, has a good start but it's jerks and profile guys he's not gonna hit 30 home runs i'm sorry <laughs> right it's not gonna happen no he's not it's um not. It's and not the gonna way they're gonna have to win run. is with pitching and defense you know you're gonna have to get really good pitching you're gonna have to win games like today you Two one games, like you're gonna have to win those games two one, and they didn't get it done today. They have to find ways to scrap runs across the board. It's not gonna be pretty. It's gonna be ugly. Um, it's gonna be torturous. Uh, it just that's just how it is. It's not gonna be an offense that you know is anything to be really feared. You're just gonna have to find ways to scratch across runs in any way possible. I mean, you you tweeted about this earlier. I mean, they've hit four home runs, and again, it's a week. Um, one of the yards is a really good hitter's yard, Arizona. The other, because of wind and weather, is not necessarily a good hitter's yard this time of year in San Francisco. But four home runs, obviously, is a really low number. There's only, what, two teams that have hit three, Jim? Did we look that up? It's not like two or three teams have hit three. And it's then like the Padres. Yeah, it's like, it's like the Royals and the it's Pirates Baltimore. or something. Yeah, Baltimore. so, I mean, obviously, it's not good enough. I mean, you're coming home for 10 games, um, and you got to start hitting at home. I mean, <laughs> they have to start hitting at home. You can't go through this homestand and have what you know hit another four or five home runs in 10 games i mean that, that's not going to be good enough you're playing now the braves defending world champs or three and four by the way um you're playing the dodgers we know about we know enough about them and you're playing the reds who, nobody knows anything about the reds they're not supposed to be good and you should win that series at home but like offense has to do more to support Manaya, musgrove shoot mckenzie gore friday night it shouldn't be on mckenzie gore to be perfect friday night that's ridiculousness and i don't even right. mean perfect but you got to support him. You know, if he gives you four and two third innings and three runs, you got to find a way to win a game when that happens. That that should be the expectation, and that should be good enough to win a baseball game when someone's making their major league debut. So, the and, as good as the pitching has been, I think you'd agree, Jim. It should be better than four and three because the pitching's mm -hmm. been really good. And to to buy Bitcoin Daily's point, um, you know, Manny historically starts off his season slow. He doesn't have a homer. You're right. He has three doubles. Get a double today. That's great. Mm -hmm. But I that's what I said. He's it, Manny has to play at an MVP type of level for the first two months of this season to have this offense be average. 
and it's not right now. And and I know it's only six games or seven games, yep. right? Yep. But you start seeing this as potentially a trend, and that's what I'm scared about. Yeah, the one thing I will say about that only game thing, and I agree with you, everything you're, you're saying, I'm saying, but all of a sudden seven becomes like 10, and you're like, well, it's 10 games. Yeah. And that's yep. enough of a period of time where becomes you can be hot or cold in 10 games yeah. or 15 games. Um, you know, oh, he's on the hot this, seat. He's on the hot seat, Craig. I'm just, he, this is it for me. Yeah, it's this season. It's 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 not now because it's seven games, but it's now if they don't produce, if they find themselves on the outside looking in, um, the fan base is going to say that he is. I don't know if Peter Seiler's going to say. I, actually, I know Peter Seiler won't say that because I've heard him say mm-hmm. it as recently as in the last week. And he'll be on with Darren Smith tomorrow, by the way, uh, between noon and three, and extra thirteen sixty. You can then hear back that interview with Jim. Coming up tomorrow afternoon as well, if you miss it. Um, but he's not going to. I'll tell you this: Peter Seiler will back his general manager one hundred percent when Darren asks that question within the next fourteen hours or whenever he asks it. For me, it's for AJ's job. It's playoffs or bust. It's as simple as that. I agree. If this team makes if this team makes the postseason, um, actually, I give more credit to Bob Melvin in that situation. But still, you you will have to give credit to Preller for putting a roster together that made a postseason in a full 162 game season. Um, but if they do not make the postseason, they win 83 games. Um, yeah, no blame on Bob Melvin and all the blame will go to AJ Preller for his roster construction and failure to once again, build a winning roster. I don't care if they win 83 games and have a, a, a winning record on the season or 82. They need to make the postseason. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care. Uh, Andrew, Thank you for the uh, Yen Super Chat. We always appreciate that. Thanks for hanging out with us from uh, over in Asia. This is a good question. Uh, and it got me thinking also about Brent Rooker, by the way. I saw our buddy mm-hmm. Ben Fadden tweet about Brent Rooker tonight. Who homered Bring again him up. In AAA. Uh, who would you trade for Brian Reynolds now? I mean, listen, they need outfield production. Um, there is no question about that. I mean, look around this outfield. <laughs> Uh, Profile, like you said, is not going to do this. Myers has done nothing. Grisham has done nothing. Beatty shouldn't be asked to do anything other than be a fourth outfielder. So they could use him, but I mean, I don't know what you can give up for him. I really don't because it would take moving a lot to get him. Like, if I can find a way to get Reynolds without trading Abrams and obviously Gore, I'm doing it. I'm doing Hassel. I'm doing Campusano. I'm doing who I'm doing. Uh, Jorge Ona, like I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You're just throwing some names together, right? Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm sorry. This, the major league club is more important than two years from now. It, it's just what it is. If, if Robert Hassel, um, uh, Robert Hassel better hope he turns into Brian Reynolds. Brian right. Reynolds is, is right, is right now a, a established outfielder that will, that, that's, you know, what this team needs. And this team can't wait. Now I don't know if the it's Pirates will even do that. Honestly, it's it's more or less on the Pirates. Um, but if I, I'm trading multiple pieces, and I'm trying to get Brian Reynolds, and the other thing I'm doing, and Andrew, it's a great it's a great point, and thank you for the super chat. The other thing I'm doing, I'm looking long and hard at this player I just acquired from the Twins in the power hitting outfielder Brent Rooker. Um, now I don't know what you move. I don't know where you put them right from day one. I get it. You got Myers. You got Grisham. You got Profar, who's who's done a little bit here. Uh, you got a Beatty. Like so, I don't know if you just bring them up and play them because I don't know how you do that. But mm-hmm. if someone's sitting in AAA and someone's not hitting in the major leagues, it's at least got to be considered. It's at least he's 27 years old and a former first round pick, and he can hit a ball 500 feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, am I missing something? I don't see Trent Grisham doing that right now. No, and, and a lot again, of this stuff- he doesn't play center field. But you get my point. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff, really, John, is just throwing darts against yep, a board, right. hoping it to is. hit. You know, it like is. today, perfect example. Uh, who hit? Uh, what's his name? Luke Williams or Luke Jackson for yeah, the for the Giants? Would, yeah. Literally the most random baseball player ever, and he won the game for the Giants today for right. getting that two RBI double in like the second inning. You know, like that's what you need. You need stuff like that on your team. You need to have a, a guy. You're like, who the hell is that? Help you win a baseball game if you're not right. going to have a power hitting lineup. You're talking about the great Luke Williams who came into today with a career 640 OPS and 100 at bats and two run oh, double. Yeah, okay. And he, he basically won the game for them offensively. Exactly. 
Uh, Matt Keen, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate all the super chats tonight. If you yes, want to make sure we get you. your comment, if you want to make sure yeah, we get yeah, your yeah. comment, use the super chat. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, by the way, if you're a Padres fan, if you're with us live or on replay. Um, this is an interesting point. It could be a season of a death by a thousand paper cuts if they can't figure out this lineup soon-ish. Can't panic just yet, though. Agree with both points. I agree with all of that. Yeah. yeah. We can't panic, but... Can't panic. You definitely are seeing a trend here that could become um, most of the season where it is going to be very tough to watch. There's going to be some games where I I felt it today, Jim, and you've been saying when they fell behind 2-1, I'm like, eh. You know, I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, you're on the road. It's a tough place to hit. It's a good pitcher. Yeah, I will say this about today, though. It's Logan Webb, who is a sure. a budding ace in this league, and one of I mean, you could argue is one of the best pitchers right now in baseball. It's going to be the oh. games where they're facing the nobodies. I know, but where, why is it always against the aces? Even again, it's the aces. Why can't they have a game where they can hit an ace hard? I'm not saying right, this, I know, right. Give I know. me a game where you hit an ace hard. Other teams yeah. hit aces hard occasionally. Giants did it to Darvish. Why mm-hmm. can't they do it to Webb? Let's just blame Michael Bradar. Yeah, I'm blaming Michael Rodar. It's all his fault. He's probably rooting for the Giants since he worked there like three weeks ago. No, I'm just kidding. He's like, hey, do this when you're up there. And the hitter's like, what? Uh, Buy Bitcoin Daily. Thank you for the super chat once again. Thank you. Padres have way too many holes in their lineup to have a payroll pushing the luxury tax. It's like Dennis. We said that at the start of the spring training. Top top heavy. (laughs) Top heavy roster. We said this too much money. Anybody trying to fool you that this lineup is great is stop and the question i mean i thought this was an interesting point off our text line today it's like you know the tatis is not the white knight here he's not the it doesn't solve everything i mean you put tatis in this lineup it it helps oh it helps it helps but remember you're getting a tatis off a wrist with a shoulder and i would never doubt tatis i will never ever ever doubt tatis but don't ask him to save your season if you're scoring three runs a game and you're now thinking oh we're gonna score six you know baseball doesn't work like that right you know um, but that's a great point. I mean, it really is. I mean, there's too many holes for $230 million in payroll. That is a hundred percent accurate by Bitcoin daily. Yep. Uh, Adrian, thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks, man. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, would you rather have an above 500 team now or after the all-star break when it really matters? Remember, we always fall apart after the all-star break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all that matters is the end result, right? I mean, after 162, yeah. where do they stand? You know? And right now it's just, Stay afloat, stay in it, don't fall too far behind, get to a point in the trade deadline where you are trading for pieces instead of trading away pieces. And that's what's the most that's what's important. And then once you once that once that time passes and hopefully Preller makes a good trade, knock on wood, hasn't happened lately, but you know, I mean last year, of course. Lately, Sean yeah. and I is a good trade. Yeah, Manai, um, yeah. but you know. That's what you got to do. If this team is hovering around 500 at the trade deadline and make a big move for a bat, and oh, by the way, they're also going to get Tatis back, that's that's hopefully what this team would need. And then you start playing your best baseball going into August, September, boom, have, have everyone stay healthy, hopefully get into the postseason and make some noise. Well said. Um, I want to remind our viewers about our new relationship and partnership with Monkey Knife Fight. This is super cool. Great offer for our viewers. If you click the link down below, just click show more. You click the link down below. Amazing offer. 100% instant match up to your first $100 of your first deposit. So make a deposit. $10, they'll match it. You get a free $10. Deposit $50, it'll be matched. You get a free $50 all the way up to $100. Just use promo code wrap up. Link down below, promo code wrap up. Here's the other thing you get though, a free game. So right now, if you click on that link, it's taking you to um, a game that's going to occur before the Padres game tomorrow. You get this free $5 game. If you get these two more or less games right, all you got to say is Logan Gilbert's going to have less than five and a half strikeouts tomorrow for the Mariners. And Cole Irvin of the A's is going to have more strikeouts than four and a half. If you get those two things right, you win $12.50. If you lose, you lose nothing. It's a free game. So if you sign up by clicking that link down below, has anyone played Monkey Knife Fight, by the way? Um, since we started this promotion, let us know in the chat. Just use the promo code wrap up. You get the instant match up to $100 on your first deposit. You also get the free $5 game if you are a new player. Uh, and again, the game right now, Logan Gilbert, more or less than five and a half strikeouts. Cole Irvin, more or less 
than four and a half strikeouts. You get both those right, $12.50. You get either of them wrong, you lose absolutely nothing. So um, if you're looking for you know fun daily fantasy gaming that doesn't take all day to prepare for, if you're looking to play daily fantasy involving Padres games, you can do that as well uh, with Monkey Knife Fight. And there will also be updated you know, players constantly. So tomorrow, I'm sure there'll be our link will give you a Padres um, centric type yep. of thing you can you can uh, you can you can vote on. So uh, keep a lookout for that and uh, make sure you click the link before tomorrow's game. Um, and Anthony, thanks for playing. <laughs> 40, <laughs> he won 40 bucks today, lost $80 this week. But again, they'll match up to $100 and they'll give you the free game. And there's some five for five games, by the way. That's a two for two game, right? You get both of the picks right. You win twelve yeah. fifty. There's some five yeah. for five games. You go five for five on a free game, you can win a hundred dollars. Boom. Um, so click the link down below. Check it out. Monkey Knife Fight. Yeah. Uh with the wrap up show. Let's get back to a super chat here, Jim. There you go. We traded Adam Frazier for a bag of peanuts. Has Adam Frazier done anything with the Mayor Mariners? I saw he committed an error that led to a grand slam the other day. Oh, nice. Adam Fraser wasn't doing anything here anyway. It was a dumb trade by Preller. It made absolutely no sense. He had no, no sense. spot on this team. Who they trade him for? Like a bag of peanuts, as Sean said. <laughs> Sean, thank you by the way for the super chat. Uh, let's see what I watch. Adam Fraser's probably hitting like four ninety one, probably. Uh, like actually he's hitting no, or how about one sixty? Oh, okay, so he'd, he'd, he'd fit right. In, he'd, he'd fit right in with the Padres. Yeah, it does have four RBI, uh, two RBIs, two RBIs, mm -hmm. more than Manny. More than, yeah, more than many. Uh, what do you make of um, tomorrow? So, what, I mean, we're talking about today on the radio. Gates are going to open at three. Yeah. Uh, you got what? Someone from Switchfoot doing the national anthem. You got flyovers. You got all star introductions. You've got Joe Musgrove, um, mm -hmm. who earned this opportunity pitching for the Padres. You've got the defending world champs here. Um, yeah. You got to sell out. The game is officially sold out. Tickets are available for the next three games yeah. of the series. But you know, what do you what do you hope to see tomorrow and, and this weekend? Well, you know, as far as the pomp and circumstance goes of opening day and Joe Musgrove on the mound and uh, you know all the flyovers and everything like that, uh, you're getting a real test this weekend. Like no doubt about it, you're getting a real test with the Braves for four, the Reds for three, and then the Dodgers. Like mm -hmm. this is no cakewalk. You got to be on your game right away. And hopefully tomorrow um, the offense shows up a little bit. Joe pitches well and they can get a win. But uh, it's like there's no like easy, not easy. Um, Like what's it called? You know, easing your way into the home homestand. Gotcha. Like you are mm -hmm. boom right away. Right. Atlanta Braves. Yep. So. Yeah, it's, no, I mean, uh, yeah. I agree. Who's pitching for Atlanta tomorrow? I pulled it up a minute ago. Um, Charlie Morton. Okay, Charlie Morton. So Chuck Morton tomorrow. Um, go win that game with Joe Musgrove on the mound for your home opener. Go just find a way to win that game. I mean, come on, there's forty five thousand people there. People have been waiting for this yeah, for fine. seven months. Uh, win the game. I mean, find a way to win the game. Let, let's see if this offense can come to life. They've done it basically. Like the aberration has been the one offensive game against Arizona when they scored 10 runs, and the aberration for the pitching staff was, was uh, Darvish. Darvish is one game. You know what I mean? So right. it's like there's been one good offense, really good offensive game. There's been six really good pitching performances so far. Like, come on, offense. You're up. You got to perform. Score six runs. Score seven right. runs. You know? One time. Um, one more super chat here from our buddy by Bitcoin Daily. Thank you again for your support all night long. Um, I think the crowd's gonna be great. I think the crowd's gonna be so sometimes though with the, the big crowds, the Jimmy, crowd, Jimmy, but sometimes the big crowd it, it can be you know, it can make you tight occasionally. Like the other team's loose in the big crowd, you know, Atlanta doesn't right. care. Hey, if they win, if they're if they're scoring runs, like crowd will be popping. Who, who's going by the way this weekend? Put it in the chat if you're going this weekend. Any of these games, Jim's going. Did you freeze, Jim? You got me. Kind of. Yeah, dude. I'm. I'm ready. My thing. Everything's dying over here. I. I'm. I know. I'm. I'm I might be tapping All right. out. <laughs> okay. We're, we're. Well, we're getting towards the end of this, but let's read this. All right, from Matt. Thank you again, Matt, for your support tonight uh, on the wrap up show with the super chats. I hope the Padres win on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, thanks, especially Matt. Since, it, man. Uh, since uh, both of those games are nationally televised, especially ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, is a really good point. Let's show the uh, U.S. and San yeah. uh, what San Diego is all about. Uh, great point, great point. 
I thought one of the coolest moments last year um, was the Sunday Night Baseball win against St. Louis when the Padres were really rolling. You know, when I think right. back on last year, I'm like, man, that was a fun time of the year. The Padres are really rolling. Um, yeah, I feel like this is a pretty uh, highly visible series, Jim. You know what I mean? It's Atlanta. They won the World Series, and there's nationally televised games. Um, at worst, isn't tomorrow like, like a series? Isn't tomorrow like also like an Apple TV game or something? Is it for? I have no idea. I don't know. Not tomorrow. I meant Friday. Sorry. Uh, does that mean we have to have Apple TV, or can we watch Bally Sports? I don't know, man. Because the other night it was TBS and Bally Sports. Oh, yeah. Um. All right, Matt. Thank you. Um. For our viewers, thank you for hanging out with us tonight, despite the fact that Jim just like found his first like AOL CD and put it in his computer and like has twenty four hundred modem or whatever he has. Um, it sucks. By the way, shameless plug, Jim, before we get out of here, because uh, voting is underway and I think ends in a couple of weeks. You can vote for us in the UT Readers poll uh, just by um, clicking on the link down below. We're nominated for Best Radio Drive Time Show somehow, uh, Best Sports Talk Radio Show somehow, <laughs> Best Talk Radio Show somehow, and I personally somehow. am nominated for Best Radio Personality in the City of San Diego. Um so somehow we appreciate you voting for us for any of those awards that we're out for in the UT uh, readers poll. My internet's done. My computer's done. I, I'm done. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, as a reminder, as we make our way out of here, please subscribe to this channel for year round Padres content. Please hit the notification bell. You'll be notified when we're live. Please smash the like button. And follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD, at John and Jim. Please support our sponsors, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. We wouldn't be doing this without Mark. He can help save you $750 on your insurance. Auto, home, runners, or life. A San Diegan, a Padres fan, and a massive Padres fan. Click the link down below. <laughs> what is going on with Jim? Uh, Aura.organic. <laughs> you can save money with Aura by clicking the take, your, take the quiz button. There's a link down below. Um, also their co-founder will is a San Diegan, um, improve your health in 2022, save money with us through aura <laughs> monkey knife fight, use promo code wrap up. There's a link down below. You get an instant match up to $100 on your first deposit. You get the free $5 game as well with a chance to win up, um, to a hundred dollars. And again, if you want to check out the merch, the new merch, we got it available down below in the links for Jim and Jim's internet. Uh, I'm John Jim's on the radio tomorrow at 3 PM. I'll check in from park city, Utah. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, thank you, Mark Nimitz, our title sponsor. See you this weekend. Oh.